Hey what's good people it's low heat and in this video I'll try to explain all possible reasons why you have latency or pops and clicks when playing back and recording your projects in your DAW. This is super important if you do real-time recording using a controller such as the machine or the Ableton push which are the main focus of this channel so subscribe and hit the notification bell if you want to follow my Ableton and machine tutorials and other music production related videos and now let's get straight into the topic. So for any beginners out there, let's start with what's latency. So this is the delay between hitting a note on your controller or playing your instrument when you're recording it into your DAW or uh, recording vocals and actually hearing the note that you're playing. So this applies to both controllers and to real instruments when you're recording audio. And with audio recording, you can actually avoid this by using the direct monitor on your audio interface. However, in this situation, you won't be able to monitor your recording through the effects of your DAW. So it's not a great solution for uh, all situations. So what are the main factors that cause latency? So first of all is the audio driver and there's a difference between Mac and PC in this regard. So on a Mac computer, even with a built-in audio interface, you've got the core audio driver which has very good latency performance and it's perfectly usable without installing additional drivers. And that's why some audio interfaces don't really have additional drivers on Mac because it's not really that necessary. And on Windows, this is not the case. The, the built-in um, DirectX and MME drivers have terrible latency performance and uh, if you by an audio interface, it will enable you to use ACO drivers, which are supposed to have really good performance as well. And if you don't have a separate audio interface, you can try the ACO for all um, driver uh, for Windows computers, which will enable your built-in sound card to have a decent latency performance, although probably not as good as having a separate dedicated audio interface with its own uh, ACO driver. So on Windows, it's hard to have really good latency performance without using a separate audio interface, while on Mac, you're good to go with the built-in one. The second most important factor is the buffer size that you set in your DAW. So the higher the buffer size, the higher the latency. Uh, by default, in Ableton, and I think in Machine 2, it sets to 512 samples. This is a decent balance between latency and CPU performance. But if you want to get really, really low latency, for example, when you're finger drumming or recording really uh, percussive rhythmic parts, you would need to get it down to probably 128 and even 64 if you want to have a really snappy performance uh, from your DAW. And the issue here is that when you're using a lower buffer size, it's much easier to overload your CPU. And when you're using the higher buffer size, your CPU has more breathing room and it can cope with larger projects much easier. However, the latency can be too high and uh, not really usable. That's the big problem here. On one side, you have CPU usage and on the other side, you have latency. So you need to balance both and choose the setting that works best for you. And since I mentioned CPU overloads, obviously this is all about your CPU. When you have a better CPU with better performance, you can run bigger projects with a lot of instruments and effects without getting these pops and clicks at a lower latency. And when your CPU is um, not that powerful, you get those pops and clicks at lower latencies. So yeah, that's how it works. And um, if you have a slow CPU, this doesn't mean that you won't be able to reach lower latencies. You will be able to reach them. However, your CPU will overload pretty easily if you're using heavy plugins and heavy instruments and effects. The next factor, it's not really that big of a factor uh, nowadays, is the quality of the audio driver of your audio interface. Like I said, you need to have an ACO driver on Windows. Obviously, some manufacturers have better quality drivers and they're able to reach lower latencies. However, every half decent interface nowadays should be able to give you a decent low latency performance. So this is not really a huge problem. Another factor, and it's somewhat of a hidden factor, and this is actually some plugins that actually cause delay, that actually add latency to your project. And uh, these are usually high quality mixing and mastering plugins. And uh, you can check that as you hover um, your mouse cursor 
onto the title bar of the plugin in, uh, in Ableton and I'm not sure about uh, other DAWs but in Ableton you just hover the mouse on the name of the plugin down there in the detailed view. On the bottom left hand corner you will see the amount of latency that it adds to your project because obviously this plugin adds a delay to the channel that is loaded into. However to prevent uh, your channels getting out of sync Ableton delays all other channels in your project uh, by the same amount so this basically adds to your latency and so it's best to leave such plugins for uh, after when you finished recording and apply them at, at the mixing stage so you can get the best possible latency performance while you're recording and making beats and playing instruments and recording vocals and whatever another problem that's specific to windows however is the so-called dpc latency and it's basically a hardware conflict between uh, a hardware component in your computer such as your graphics card or your Wi-Fi card which can actually interfere with the audio stream and uh, cause those clicks and pops so you can download the application called Latency Mon it's a latency monitor which will actually analyze the performance of your components in your Windows computer and will let you know if there are any driver issues that uh, degrade your low latency performance so yeah, this kind of sucks because you can get uh, clicks and pops without actually overloading your CPU and you may be wondering what the hell is going on. But uh, yeah, try the latency mode application and uh, see if, uh, if, it can, if it can help you identify uh, the issues in your uh, Windows computer. And on a Mac computer, there were some issues with USB 2 interfaces specifically and the T2 security chip, which is available on the later models of, uh, of Mac computers. So yeah, it used to be a huge problem a couple of years ago, I'm not sure if it's been solved, but uh, hopefully it is. And uh, yeah, generally a Mac computer is uh, much better equipped for lower latency performance right out of the box. And with a Windows computer, you may need to do some optimizations. You may need to search for Windows audio optimization guides. There should be some tutorials which will help you optimize your system. So you get the best possible CPU performance and latency performance for your DAW. So these are all the possible reasons that I know, but if you know any other reasons, please drop me a comment down below and let us know. So I hope this was helpful and see you in the next video.